Hey Naturally Curly World, I'm Christina. And I'm Alexandra. I'm G. And today we are talking about natural hair mist. There are a few misconceptions in the curly girl community, y'all. And we really want to tackle them and give you all the real information so that we can all be on the same page. So we're going to start with the very first one, which is you cannot get your hair wet. <laughs> okay, so I think this myth really has its roots in our culture, specifically black culture. So let's be clear. I know for me growing up, my mom was always like, girl, you cannot get your hair wet, especially you cannot get your hair wet at the pool. Like, I would have to wear a shower cap. It would have to be some type of situation going on to really protect and cover my hair. And that is a huge myth because as a curly girl, water is your best friend and hydration is key. So you definitely can get your hair wet. It's, it's key for healthy hair. It helps your products work better, your overall health, of your scalp is gonna be better. Um, it's, it's a really good thing. So we're debunking that today. I was growing up, I was straightening my hair and this was like before actual straightener. So I was doing it with like a curling wand or trying to blow dry it straight to no avail. So again, I was also avoiding getting wet because I was trying to keep it straight for as long as possible. But even then, when you're straightening your hair that way and your hair is naturally curly or naturally wavy, it starts to curl on its own anyway, or it starts to grow, humidity especially. I think now just embracing the moisture in the air, it helps your hair look bigger and bouncier and water-based products, using water to refresh. I think now water is my best friend, but back then it was my enemy. The next hair myth is you only have one curl pattern. False. Ooh. This is so false. <laughs> it is so <laughs> false in so many ways. I know all three of us up here have multi-textured hair. It's extremely normal for you to have more than one curl pattern in your hair. I am predominantly 3C, um, like all throughout the center of my head, but I also have some 3B, some 4A, um, some places my hair is looser, some places my hair is tighter, and that's perfectly fine and it's very, very normal. And I'm a mix of 2C and 3A. There are areas like under here, my hair is just always going to be looser. And then I have other sections that will always be tighter, and that's completely normal. Almost everyone who writes in with these sorts of questions has multiple curl patterns. And being on the very far end of the spectrum with type 4C hair, sometimes I get a little zigzag. So I think that there's a little bit of a type 4Z going on in my hair too. And it's uh, kind of hard to find, but they're there. The next myth is caring for your natural hair is hard. <laughs> now it is a struggle sometimes. Don't get That's us true. wrong. Yeah. It can definitely be challenging, but for me and my experience of getting my hair permed from the time I was two years old until about 22, um, I just had no education and like hands-on experience on how to care for my hair. But now that I'm fully aware of it and I've been educated, it's not hard. It's sometimes time consuming, mm -hmm. but it's not hard. And it's, I don't think that it's really made to be hard. I just think that we really have to change our mindset around it and really relearn and just truly be educated on how to care for our specific texture and understand the ingredients and the products that work best for our specific hair type. Yeah, there's definitely a learning curve. Like I would say it's hard in the very beginning for sure. when you know nothing and you're really having to relearn everything that you thought you knew about caring for your hair. And that can be hard discovering that everything you've been doing is actually incorrect. Yes. Um, but once you get past that very early stage of like trying and failing a few times, then it gets, I think, a lot easier and more freeing. So the next myth is natural hair is unprofessional. Mm. Don't look at me like that. Mm. I, I'm not the one that said it. That is so untrue in so many ways. <laughs> Um, and it's really crazy that we actually had to pass a law 
Mm-hmm. In order for you, in order for people to express themselves at school and at work, I really don't like that. I really don't like yeah. that people kind of put such a limitation on what on what professionalism even looks like. Yeah, this one just makes me so angry. And the idea that something about your body can be unprofessional, like your body just in its natural state, is unprofessional. It's just. It's clearly a myth. This one's wrong, but it is still very prevalent. I know yeah. plenty of curly girls who feel the need to interview for a job wearing their hair straightened or pulled sleek back and then only feel comfortable once they're in the job and they feel like they have job security than wearing their natural hair. So the law that we're talking about is called the Crown Act and it's been passed in a couple of states. Um, I think the reason why this is so important is because it's rooted in racism and systemic oppression. So it's not just about if you're going to a job interview or your place of work with natural hair or School. with dreads. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like schools. it happens everywhere. And so I think it's frustrating for me because when I'm in like curly forums, we're still seeing questions like, do you think I should wear a wig to this interview? Because I don't think I'm going to get the job yeah. if I go with my hair curly. And like you were saying, it's about who you are. How can you actively discriminate against someone because of what they're growing out of their head? The next myth is that type 4C hair does not grow. Still see your bone head. Okay, so G <laughs> is like, mm, I'm about to get into it. Listen, okay, everyone with type 4 hair knows how frustrating it is when people see you and they're like, oh, it's been 10 long years and you still have really short hair. And it's like, I'm not going to pull out one strand of my curl to show you that it's actually like, I don't know, 20 feet long. <laughs> but the shrinkage is so real. real. Yes. So in my experience, um, I, I embrace my shrinkage. My hair is pretty much shrunken right now. Um, I rarely elongate it on my own with twist outs, um, with braid outs and stuff like that. When I do, it looks super cute. But really, I don't want to break my hair by constantly manipulating it. I need to embrace the shrinkage phase because that's just my hair. Like, that's it. It's beautiful that way. It's going to be short um, or have the appearance of being short. The next myth is exercise is not an option. Y'all. <laughs> so... That's really interesting because I've read so many articles where women are constantly questioning how to work out with curly hair. Really? It's a struggle. Like it, people, people really experience a struggle, which is kind of interesting to me because there are several ways you can do it. So first, just let me tell you a few ways because I think I think the biggest thing is like you just not really understanding how to care for your hair while working out. So you can do a top knot. You can do a pullback ponytail. You can do a pineapple. You can um, you can pull your head you can pull your hair up into a head wrap. Um, put a head. Just you can also have a pullback ponytail with a headband. Um, Tracy Ellis Ross, my curl crush, she mentioned how she just slips her hair back and she does like a braid. Like so, there's so many options. Um, all I can say is do not let anything or anybody stop you from being your best self, period. Yeah, I think people hear when they start embracing their curls that they're not supposed to wash their hair as often as they probably were before. And so that element kind of conflicts with the working out regularly because people think, oh, well, I can't wash my hair, I can't get sweaty. But there are definitely ways to continue to care for your scalp and to tie up your hair in ways that aren't going to then make it impossible to refresh the next day. I think refreshing is a big yes. key in this working out and then still rocking your curls. So learning a good refreshing routine and then like Alex was saying, finding a style that you can wear your hair in while you're working out. The next myth is you cannot color curly hair. I colored my hair before I was fully natural and that was a disaster only because I had chemically relaxed hair 
and I was straightening my hair. So I think too, it's going back to those old mindsets of how we were already treating our hair very badly and then we were adding more chemical on top of it. But you can definitely color your hair if it's done properly. Yeah, color can be so damaging but even in recent years, there's been a lot of advances in the technology. So I bleached my hair blonde about five years ago and it did destroy my hair. But I think that if I did it today, it wouldn't necessarily go that way. I think that if you lighten it with a stylist who knows how to work with curls, it's very possible to color curly hair and not experience damage, but I think that also virgin hair is going to be the healthiest hair. You're going to want to alternate between deep conditioning moisturizing treatments and protein treatments as well because once you color your hair, you are taking your hair from being normal or even low porosity to then being high porosity. So you're going to have to change your routine completely to one that really caters to being high porosity. The next myth is that all natural hair is coarse. This is not true. So for my natural hair, I have very fine hair in the front and throughout the rest of my hair, it's pretty coarse. But some people, their entire head is full of very fine, super curly hair. I'm talking about like coils. Yeah. So not everybody with natural hair has coarse hair, which is then translated into strong hair, which might be a completely different conversation but that's not true at all. I'm, I'm curious to know, like, what is your definition of coarse? So coarse for me is um, just the shape of the hair strand uh, and also its texture, like how it actually feels whenever you touch it. If it's thick and it feels a little rugged, to me, that's what coarse means. There's coarse and the opposite of that is fine. So a coarse strand of hair is just wider around and then a fine strand of hair is smaller. The next myth is gel and mousse make your hair crunchy and flaky. I feel like that comes from the 90s where everybody <laughs> used to use like that. I don't know why I'm thinking about this product in particular, but so I've had this mousse I used to use and I used to scrunch it in my hair and it would make my hair so hard and so flaky and really crunchy, but like we have progressed so beyond that, that there's amazing gels and mousses that I use a lot in my regimen, but they're water-based um, and they don't dry my hair out. Yeah, I would definitely agree that this used to be true, but not anymore. I remember using gels and sprays in middle school and high school that definitely left me crunchy, but now I see that cast that a gel leaves behind is kind of the starting point. So I apply my styler to wet hair and then it dries and it does have a little bit of a crunch. But then I scrunch out the crunch with my fingers by like scrunching like this and it breaks that cast and then it becomes touchable and soft curls. And I did that today actually. So it has happened where I've used gel and it's crunchy and it's flaky, but then I found mousse and mousse did everything for my hair. And I was afraid of it because I didn't think it was designed for people with type four curls at all. But when I tried it, and it's because I was like, I want to scrunch like Christina. <laughs> so I did that and it actually made my curls way more defined. Throughout the day, they were soft. Um, with gel, I had to change the way I applied gel. So I thought you could only put it on dry hair to get that definition. Then I realized you have to get your hair wet yes. and then put the gel on. And then if you do want to kind of avoid that crunch, you need to put a little bit of oil on the ends and just kind of work it in and you are good to go. Well, ladies, how do y'all feel? I mean, I think we debunked several myths that have been kind of floating around in our community. I think so too. I'm super excited to hear what y'all think about this though. Yeah, I'm <laughs> sure you're going to have things to say, so let us know what you think in the comments. All right, y'all. Well, we look forward to seeing y'all next time. And be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you later. Bye. 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 Bye.